Well, another episode, another flannel. Hi, this is Justin with This Old Bench, where we take a look at vintage and rare Earthquaker pedals. Well, today we've got a pedal that was brought in by uh, Jeff France. He's a production manager here at Earthquaker. Let's see what we have. We've got the dirt transmitter. Very nice. Let's check out the letter. Dirt transmitter. The first EQD pedal I bought was the dirt transmitter. I had moved back from Akron and was working for Pat Carney as his studio manager. He had a couple of Jamie's pedals and they all sounded pretty awesome. This was the first time in my life that I could afford to buy myself something as frivolous as a pedal. So I tested everything he had and picked up the dirt transmitter for myself and a disaster transport for my friend Tucker. I liked how the bias allowed you to go from full and ripping to gated and what I think Velcro sounds like when you pull it apart. I didn't own a power supply so I used a Moog power supply that Pat told me to use and blew the power diodes on them immediately and had to drive right back to Jamie's to fix them for me. When I want a fuzz tone, my dirt transmitter is still the first one I grab. I love my first Earthquaker pedal. Let's see how it sounds. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, see? That's awesome. We used to we used to trick the new employees with uh, making these. Because it biases out, it cuts out, so we'd have them make a few. And then be like, I don't know what's wrong. You probably screwed something up. But it's a trick. choked back there. Yeah, crap it out. to be biased but that bias knob awesome the velcro sound perfect let's toss it to jamie for some more info it's a dirt transmitter <laughs> <laughs> holy shit uh this is one of the oldest earthquaker pedals i think this is the second version of it the first version was in a smaller enclosure it just had three controls it's missing the bias control but that was inside Fuzz face inspired uh, silicon, but sounds pretty, pretty, you know, like what people would characterize a germanium one to sound like. Um, this is one of my favorite looking Earthquaker pedals. I like the weird <laughs> command center. I don't know why I decided to put the controls there and call it a command center, but I like it now. <laughs> Look at it. I also like these little circles that go up. Also features my favorite LED bezel ever. Uh, as dumb as that sounds, I really like these little UFO bezels. But they became cost prohibitive as we uh, started growing and couldn't use them anymore. These ones, I, I think there is less than a hundred in a box like this. And of the version before it, there's less than like 30, I'll say something like that. Um, and then the final version of it, there's more of, I don't know exactly how many more, but the final version is kind of a combo. It's in the same small enclosure, but uses as much of this graphic style as we could do. I mean, I guess it does look a, a little Cold War Fallout shelter like tool, like something that would be in a ration box to keep you entertained. Uh, I think it's mostly the color. This is definitely, I mean, it's definitely one that I made. It's a uh, water slide decal and probably spray painted in my garage. This was, uh, from what I remember, like one of the easiest 
pedals to build. I think it might be the first time that I use board mounted pots. I could be wrong on that, but I feel like it is. Thanks, Jamie. Let's crack this baby open. Whoa, little guy. Big enclosure, little guy. Huh. Still using the old wires. That's pretty cool. Look at that fat cap. Nice. Pretty interesting. Good wiring as well. Yeah, I approve. Got a 71, uh, April 13th, 09. I think this was about a year or so before I came. Well, thanks for joining us on this old bench. And thanks to Jeff France for letting us borrow his dirt transmitter. And until next time, my name's Justin. Have a good one. Thank you.